In parts of the tropics, where the sea is warm, clear and shallow, there are underwater reefs. These form a barrier between the coastal waters and the sea beyond. The longest and largest series of reefs in the world lies off the northeast coast of Australia. The Great Barrier Reef extends from New Guinea to central Queensland. Most of the reef is made of coral and this forms long projections into the water on the sheltered side of the reef. In between the projections are gutters and caves. Behind the crest of the reef is a shallow lagoon. The dark clumps are coral, with coral sand in between. In some places, wind, waves and currents pile the coral sand into heaps to form a coral island. In time, plants become established on the sand and these attract animals in turn. An island is a good base from which to set out to explore the reef. At low tide, some of the coral is exposed. By swimming along the edge of the reef, you can see the shapes of the coral itself and some of the other life amongst it. Coral is made up of small animals joined together to form a colony. Many have hard skeletons which remain after they die. New coral colonies then take over. And so the reef grows a few centimeters every year. many different kinds of coral. Some resemble a honeycomb or have other shapes. Fish are everywhere. Many of the fish hide and feed amongst the coral. One of the best places to look for fish is amongst the coral caves and gutters. Look at the shapes and colors of the fish. The gomphosis. The flute mouth. Harlequin tusk fish, blue damsel fish, anemone fish, trumpeters, a stingray. You can also hear the various sounds of these reef animals. The sharp crackling noises are made by shrimps.
If you watch the fish closely, you can often see what they're eating. Watch these butterfly fish for a moment. Many of them feed from the coral. Some of the fish are much larger. This is a parrot fish. The surgent fish is so called because a structure near its tail resembles a surgeon's scalpel. If you dive with air tanks, you can go down deeper into the water. You also need lights to see the true colors of the life here. Tiny animals live together in fan-like colonies attached to the coral. On the roof of this cave is living coral. The individual animals which make up the coral colonies are easy to see. They're called polyps. Each polyp resembles a sea anemone with a ring of stinging tentacles around its mouth. It uses these to paralyze and capture passing prey. Very few corals live in caves as most grow best where the light is brighter. In these shaded regions you can find animals such as sponges, which filter food from the sea water. And so do sea squirts. The feathery gills of a tube worm also collect food. Flatworms feed by browsing. In the darker regions of the caves, there are some fish which only emerge at night. Others, like this small fish on a sponge, never leave the cave. Crayfish live in the darkest corners and move outside only at night. The surge caused by the waves overhead carries food and oxygen to all the cave dwellers. For the moray eel, the cave provides shelter from danger and a hiding place from which to attack its prey. Large fish, like the coral trout, are sought by fishermen. The sweet lip is another. The small fish with a black stripe along its side is a cleaner fish. Watch what it does. Cleaner fish feeds by eating the small parasites which are found on all fish, especially in the gills. False cleaner fish looks very like a cleaner fish, 
But when larger fish wait to be cleaned, the false cleaner fish takes a bite of the fish instead. Near the water surface, there is floating life known as plankton. Most plants and animals of the plankton are too small to see easily. However, some, like these comb jellies, are quite large. The manta ray feeds on plankton. The small fish swimming underneath is a remora. It can attach itself to manta rays and other fish and be carried along. Not only are there many different kinds of fish feeding and sheltering around a coral reef, but there are large numbers of them too. Some of these fish are caught by birds. Crested terns catch fish in this way. Noddy terns pick up small fish very close to the surface. Reef herons fish in shallow water. Even the sand is made by coral polyps. Coral sand is the wave-worn remains of coral skeletons. Some birds of the shore, like the turnstone, find food under seaweed and amongst the coral sand. Many of these waders are summer visitors from the northern hemisphere. Twice each day, the rising tide brings water and food to the sand dwellers. At high tide, the beach is too narrow for the wading birds to feed. In summer, female turtles come to the beach. Most arrive at night, but occasionally one may nest during the day. A shallow depression is dug out with her front flippers and then she digs an egg chamber with her hind flippers. If the sand is too wet or too dry, she digs a new hole somewhere else or returns to the sea to nest another time. The shallow water of the lagoon provides a home for many animals. Stingrays are sometimes numerous. Coral growth sometimes has a flat top if it's exposed at low tide. Humbug fish and other fish live close to staghorn coral. And watch what happens when danger threatens. And 
some fish make shelters for themselves in the coral sand. Heliotrid fish dig burrows in the sand and get food from it too. Each mouthful of sand is filtered. The food is swallowed and the waste sand passed out through the gills. The beche de mer, a sea cucumber, also eats sand. The sand passes through the animal, the food particles are removed and the sand left behind. Starfish feed largely on snails and other shellfish. This strom is one of the larger shellfish. Look at its eyes. Cowries are hard to find in daylight. Clams are fairly common in shallow water. They're often large and attach themselves to the sea floor. Sometimes they're embedded in the coral. The nudibranch is a shellfish without a shell. Its name means naked gill. The gill is the structure you can see on the animal's back. The hermit crab lives in an empty shell. As it feeds and grows, it needs to find larger and larger shells. These long strands are the tentacles of a worm which lives in a crevice under the coral. The tentacles search for food, which is then taken to the animal's mouth. Camouflage helps protect fish on the reef. Although many of the coral fish seem to be brightly coloured, most are hard to see in the flickering light underwater. The mottled pattern of the moray eel blends with the coral. There are many other examples of protective camouflage. Look at these. Master of camouflage must be the stonefish as it creeps across the coral sand. There are 13 poisonous spines along its back. And these can inflict a very painful sting. Sharks can also be hard to see, especially if the water is cloudy. The Great Barrier Reef is a world of its own. A world built up over countless centuries by the work of billions of tiny polyps. This remarkable collection of living things is easily damaged. 
great care will be needed to ensure that the barrier reef, with all its life, continues to survive into the future. underwater world has its own patterns of movement. Each animal species has developed its own way to solve the universal problems of finding food and evading enemies. The spirographus, an animal which looks like a delicate flower, emerges from its long tubular body. It stretches its tentacles to entrap minute particles of food. If it is threatened, it retreats into the tube. The starfish moves over the ocean floor in search of its food. Hundreds of feet on each of the five arms, enable it to move over rocks and difficult surfaces. Each foot ends in a suction cup, which helps to give it a powerful grasp, even on the smooth glass wall of the aquarium. At the end of each arm are tentacles, which feel the surroundings, and an eye spot, with which the starfish can see light and dark. Any one of the arms can be in the lead. The starfish can move in any direction and change direction without turning. On the top of the starfish body is a filter through which the animal takes in water. The starfish absorbs its oxygen from the water. On the underside of the body is the mouth. If a starfish falls on its back, it can turn itself over with considerable effort. If it is tossed up by waves on the beach, it must return to the water within a few minutes since it cannot live on dry land. Each of the flexible arms contains many tubules which are filled with water. By increasing or decreasing the pressure within the tubules, the starfish expands or contracts its arms to move. Without water, the body stiffens and the starfish dies. Thus, the ability to turn over and move away from danger is vitally important. One arm is damaged or broken off, a new one will grow in its place. The starfish is carnivorous, and its favorite food is shellfish, clams, oysters, mussels, and scallops. It grasps the shell in its arms, attaches its sucker feet, and pulls steadily and strongly until the clam or mussel tires, relaxes its hold, and lets the shell open. The starfish has a small, weak mouth but it has a large stomach. It can push its stomach out of its mouth and into the shellfish, where it digests the meat inside the shell. Then it sucks its stomach back inside itself. The shellfish are not completely helpless against their enemy, however. Many species have developed unusual means of locomotion and can retreat from danger when necessary.
This sea snail ordinarily moves slowly. But when attacked by a starfish, the snail can show a very unsnail-like speed. The snail walks on its single foot in rhythmic waves of action. Clams use their muscular foot to jump out of danger. The steadily moving snail and the hopping clam each have a chance of survival through their own peculiar means of locomotion. The scallop has still another method of movement. In fact, scallops are the fastest swimmers among shellfish. They shoot off like jet-propelled submarines, actually using jet power. A strong flap of the shell squirts out a jet of water, which can move the scallop several feet. It can also see danger approaching with more than 20 blue-green eyes just inside its shell. When a scallop lands with his flatter shell against the sea bottom, he jumps up and turns over. He likes his curved shell to be underneath him because it holds him up a bit higher where the water is clearer and he can see food and danger better. Hunted and the hunter, shellfish and starfish, each adapted by body form and movement to the life it leads. 